Okay, hello. Uh, so today this is going to be an end-to-end -end walkthrough, a kind of a getting started walkthrough. I'll try to be as quick as I can, but there's a few things to cover to show how to set up a custom GPT using ChatGPT and then using actions to save that to your calendar. Also be able to use a precise time because uh, um, generative AI doesn't necessarily know the time and day, so we'll use uh, a code interpreter to be able to get that exact precise time. Uh, you will need a paid account of ChatGPT, but everything else we're doing um, will be uh, f free accounts. So uh, let's get started here. The idea, in fact, um, here's what we want to do is let's take something like this. This is just a brief, I kind of edited uh, an existing one, uh, but a real brief to the point. Good morning, our team is connected this morning, we'd like to meet. Uh, good to hear from you. How about two to four tomorrow is kind of a window. Does it work? Uh, 30 minutes and 2 p.m. So you can see kind of that back and forth. We Let's let GPT or ChatGPT figure out the guts of that, you know, kind of make a structure out of that. And that's kind of the power of this. And then eventually save it to my calendar. So that's our goal. So what we're going to do is let's go to ChatGPT. We'll explore GPTs and we'll do create. And I'm assuming you may have familiarity with creating a custom GPT. I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but you might have started in create. I'm going to start in configure mode here. And so let's say um, save to Google Calendar. And I'll just paste that here too. While we're talking, I can use DALI to generate an image for us. And basically we wanted a pretty straightforward is just uh, obtain, I wanna remove the barrier to entry. You can spend more time on your prompts if you want, but let's make this as easy as possible. So obtain the calendar, uh, or I should say, let's say meeting info from the user and create uh, an event in Google. So that, and Google Calendar, that's it. Um, so again, you can spend more time, you know, you are an expert on uh, um, all this, but this, this should work for something that's straightforward like this. And uh, also here's, there's a gotcha. So I mentioned already, generative AI does have problems with the date time. So if you need, so for example, if someone said in the message uh, tomorrow or next Monday or something like that, it can't figure that out unless it knows today's exact time. So if you need the date and time, use code interpreter. Um, ER, am I spelling that right? Okay, so that, um, and now we could be more explicit and give it the actual code, but this should be sufficient. Uh, you do need to make sure to turn it on here. So we'll turn off the image gen, turn on this. We shouldn't need web browsing for what we're doing. So we'll just say code interpreter does have to be enabled down here. Okay, so now that we have that, that's just kind of a little gotcha to do with the time. Now, um, what we need to do is let's, what we're going to use Zapier. Zapier has made this available to us. It's currently free for the type of functionality we're doing today. So you can sign up for a new account. And so let's go. And if you go to zapier.com, for example, that will give you their main to create zaps, which is amazing. You can integrate 6,000 apps on one side with 6,000 on another. Uh, but what we want to do today is a different URL. It's actions.zapier.com. And you can see here it's in alpha. So it, which is pre-beta, which is pre-prod. So it could um, change quite a bit by the time you see this. Um, but what we're gonna do is let's go, we can navigate here to all platforms. We see this chat GPT and GPTs, or it also kind of says it down into this section. So we're gonna go jump to that and let's bring this into our clipboard. This get started link, this is a schema. We're gonna need that. So control C that or command C if you're on a Mac. And let's go and create a new action um, we're going to import from URL, so we'll paste that, and I'll show you briefly what this is. This is really just a page that has the schema. Zapier has made this really easy for us. So I'm going to hit import, it pulls that down, and then you can see now it can figure out the available actions that were in that schema. So we don't have to know anything else about this today, but you can explore that if you want. And this action has now been created. Oh, I, I did it kind of quickly, but I went back. So now I'm in this main section again. And now we're, we're kind of wired up. GPT is now connected generically to Zapier. Now we're gonna have to do some more complex things, but that gets us our starting point. So the next thing we wanna do is let's now go to Zapier and I'm gonna duplicate this tab and leave it around because we're gonna come back here for in a bit, but let's do a new tab and we're gonna do, oh, um, so now a, a, an important thing is your first time, you may uh, not be signed up for Zapier. So sign, sign up for a new account. Uh, once you click that My Actions, it should prompt you to sign up. Uh, enter, you know, username, uh, password. You can use your Google account, or I think they have Facebook and uh, four or so different options. 
Um, sign that, sign up, follow their wizard. It's not too important what you enter, except they know more about you. And then you'll get a screen similar to this the first time, and you can get started with this here. So as soon as you do that here, and then you can open this action setup window, like so, you will have to grant permissions. This is using OAuth 2, which grants permissions between uh, these various different worlds. And, uh, and so now you can start to build. So I'm gonna recontinue, I'm gonna minimize those two things. Now with my account that I already have, I'm gonna to go to my actions and you have a couple options here, OpenAI or Zapier is the two I have. Um, it's kind of a little bit confusing in my opinion. They kind of go to the same place, but they're slightly different. You can see the URL in the bottom corner. But I'm gonna just go to the OpenAI manage actions. Um, I don't prefer how this pops out into another window, so I copy that on my clipboard and I'll just put this in another tab here. So here's some that I've already set up, but let's go to the bottom, create new action, and now this should be like that view I had showed if you started fresh. Now here's where you have kind of those 6,000, actually even more than that, 6,000 apps, way more than that actions, and we're going to do Google Calendar. And... Okay, so here is a bunch within view, and while it's still this uh, Google Calendar icon, there's about one screen worth here. There's a few options. Quick add event is a good place to get started, but at least in the last three or four days, it hasn't worked. I think there's a permission that's not there. It might be working again by the time you try, but let's just go right to create detailed event, which I know works. So there's more choices, more things to work through, uh, but it gives you more power too. So it, it's still fairly intuitive. I think it's worthwhile. Um, this is kind of like a wizard. It's going to go down the steps. Uh, because I've already signed up, it has this, but let's say I didn't. Uh, we can do a connect new. You're going to have a similar type of thing here. And so we'll do connect new, um, choose which account. So yes to Google Calendar. And now I need to use my account. So let's go ahead and use my S Foresight account. It wants to be able to edit, share, and permanent delete all the calendars uh, you have access to. So a lot of information we're giving Zapier access to. Uh, so there is a trust relationship being established there. Careful in your corporate policy if you have any considerations. So that's selected it here, and now the wizard has expanded. It should be the same. Every once in a while there's a glitch. Do a quick refresh of your screen, and this should be wired up in those two tabs like so. Okay, so now the calendar itself, we can, we don't, I don't want to let AI guess this. Later it's going to do it, but this is I want to be explicit on. So calendar I can do, you can see loading. Here's my calendars that are available. I'm doing an empty one I have that has a demo calendar. And so I've already gone to Google Calendar and created it. You can choose which one you want to use. Um, start date and time. This is where we want to let AI guess that. Um, end date and time, we'll let AI guess that. And then let's show all options. We have a lot more choices. Um, summary, yeah, we can say let's let AI, um, if it knows it, it's gonna fill it in. Description is important, we do wanna provide that. Uh, location, it's up to you. Let's. Do, I'm going to do the bit of the happier path and not worry about location, but you can um, edit your GPT to support that. Um, conferencing, let's not do that today, but you can start to tweak that. Um, if you do too many things at once, it might break. It takes longer to troubleshoot, so we'll start with something fairly easy and then add from that. Repeat frequency, we're not going to do that either, or repeat until, or repeat all those kind of things. Um, even color attendance, there's a lot of things that are available. Um, so now we get into this default reminder. So if we say yes, it's going to be that, which is whatever it is in Google, 15 minutes or so. Um, if you turn this to no, then you can um, put in some more reminders. Don't. Um, it will give you an issue if you try to set this to yes and try to override these reminders. Um, so do one or the other. Leave that to yes or I'll set this to no and change these. But um, so we, I'm going to just leave it as it is. Well, let's... Yeah, I'm going to leave it as it is. But if you set this to no, you can say, like I have a reminder always one day in advance, and you can either specifically set it here, or you can let that be done by AI. Okay, show is busy, and okay, so a few things there. So now let's say create Google Calendar. Um, spaces are supported. I'm a little bit old school because uh, it's kind of an ID type thing, so I don't have spaces, but it, it does support spaces. Go ahead and do that. So create Google Calendar um, event and... We'll enable that action. And here it is, you can see it's enabled. We should be good to go. And that's in my clipboard now, I copy that. So let's go back now. Well, there's something else we need to do in between. Let's go back to that first tab I mentioned here, the Zapier AI actions. Again, let's go to the ChatGPT and GPTs, which is where I am. And we're gonna scroll past where we were 
There's another section for writing instructions. If you had something to a wider audience, you can actually give them, make it easier to set up that step we just did, but we don't need that for our situation. And let's go ahead to our rules. I'm gonna copy this into the clipboard. So Zapier has given us a nice starting point. You don't have to use exactly this, but it's a great starting point for us. So we're gonna go back to um, into here. Let's go to instructions and see, you can actually expand this if you want more working space. Paste this on the bottom. And you can see these rules that they have. Feel free to look through those. And there's two required actions that we have. And we're going to kind of ignore what's there. We could spend a bit more time and have that helper. But I'm going to delete one of the two of them. And I'm going to paste. I have Windows, I have, um, Windows History, so Windows key V. And I can do that create Google Calendar event. Um, otherwise, you can go back and copy and paste if you're not familiar or, or use that. And this configuration link, let's go back to that too. I'm going to go in back into this zap that we created from Zapier. I'm going to select that and now um, move out of this. I find it, it can have an issue if you're in here and you haven't left this prompt. So go back or done. So you're back to here and it's this tab, I need to close that one. And so now replace this link with this new one. And also you can get rid of the word configuration. It's really a little bit different purpose now. It's a link. Um, it actually worked without this, but it helps with a little bit of troubleshooting. And if you left the word configuration, it would also work. But this, uh, this is a little bit more explicit. So that's, that's all we're asking. We're really letting it figure out. But again, you can uh, improve your prompt from this um, as you see fit. So let's give it a try. So we can do this. Let's, let's save this. And the first time we do it, it should ask. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and drop this in my clipboard and say, you know, please create, uh, create event with this and our calendar, you know, event should be fine. You don't even have to give it the preamble, preamble create event, it kind of knows its purpose. So you could have just immediately pasted that. But here it's inferred it, event title, it knows the start time and the end time, time zone says, what is your time zone? It's trying to, it's trying to infer, it doesn't always ask the same questions, that's generative AI for you. Attendees, again, um, it's trying to do a few things. Um, I'll just say, take your best guess, but we could, um, we could go along with it and give it all that information. So let's just let it use what it does have. Now that analyzing, I, I believe this is where it's reaching out to get the date time. And it did see it knows um, today happens to be February the, uh, the 5th. And so it figures out tomorrow is the 6th. And time zone, assuming local time zone, let's see how to handle that. And so this looks good. And if it looks good, please let me know any changes. Um, I'll proceed, yeah, no, go ahead. And so it's doing a double check on that. Again, you can tweak your prompts if you want to say either more double checking or less double checking, depending on what it is. And so it's now, uh, or if you don't want to resummarize, if you don't want to wait for that every time. So now this is the first time, the first time it connects, it's going to have the credentials here, so confirm. And I guess I've probably done it today. You might have one more step than what I do, and you'll have to grant access for actions.zapier.com. And, um, and it is a little bit of a glitch. Sometimes when it refreshes the screen, you lose that first test and everything. Um, so a one-time only thing to get that wired up. But all things considered, it's pretty impressive um, how convenient that is. Uh, every once in a while, you will run into rate limits on um, either ChatGPT or Zapier itself. We'll give you some rate limits that aren't documented as far as I know. Yeah, see there's an action, an error talking to. So let's, um, sometimes you can just say try again in that case. And it is a bit of a pain. It doesn't always work first time, but um, yeah. And then it's trying to be really lazy. Why don't you just do it manually? Yeah, that's not what I'm asking you to do. So let's see if it works here, the second attempt. Okay. And it uses about this much time, just a few seconds. There we go. So this time it worked, a little bit of nudging. And so let's try it. Let's go to my calendar and see if it's there. So I have my calendar, the demo calendar, and here it is. Uh, there appears to be two of them. Um, that might have been from a prior test. I forgot to delete it. But there it is. Let's open that up. We can see the information and get the time right. 30 minutes is correct. Uh, we have discuss team budgets and milestones, so is able to get the description. 
and, and then if you spent more time, you could get it to tweak a lot more of these settings and in your prompts really guide it. So you could spend some time and have a real nice corporate uh, calendar generator to be able to take uh, something very generic like this and write it through. So all the best as you work with it. I hope you find this helpful and uh, there's, there's a lot of flexibility uh, that you can do with this.